Hello, and welcome to Law Talk. My name is John Celebrezzi, and I'm the co-founder of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project, as we call it, CZ CLEP for short. Our organization provides continuing education about the judiciary and legislature to attorneys, judges, government officials, and the general public. As a career ed educator, I recognize early on how important legal matters are and, and how they impact our lives. I am the nephew of the late Anthony J. Celebrezzi, who was the popular five-term mayor of Cleveland and a member of President Kennedy's cabinets. As a tribute to his lifetime commitment to the legal process, we dedicate this show. Our guest today is Medina Municipal Court Judge Dale Chase. After graduation from Medina High School, Judge Chase earned a bachelor's degree in international studies from the American University and later his Juris Doctorate from the Catholic University of America. He maintained a private practice from 1975 through 1987. He was also a member of the Medina School Board and the Medina County Career Center Board. Judge Chase was elected municipal court in 1987 and was re-elected in 1993, 1999, and 2005. Welcome, Judge. Thank you, John. Nice to be here. Well, thank you for being our guest today. Judge, we're going to talk about uh, what I guess I know personally is a pretty busy place, mm -hmm. it's your, your court. I don't believe I've ever been there, whether... It's not been hustling. In any capacity. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. A, a, busy, a busy, busy place. And, uh, and I, I guess that's pretty typical of municipal court mm -hmm. cases. So we're going to dig into your, you know, the jurisdiction of the court. And I uh, have, have several questions for you I'd like to ask. But before we actually get rolling on that, I, I, I would like to ask you this question, Judge. What inspired you to be a judge? Boy, John, you're, you're asking me to go back 22 years and remember how I felt. 22 years ago, but in the mid-80s in Medina County, the justice system wasn't working as well as it should have been. I see. And uh, there were a series, a group of us, uh, myself, uh, Judge Kimbler, Greg Happ, who ran for county prosecutor, who wanted to change how that got, how justice issues got handled in Medina County. I see. And a whole group of us in the mid-80s all ran for judge or other office to try and change how some things were done. In my court, in the Medina Municipal Court, one of the things that concerned me at the time was the amount of uh, DOI reductions that were happening in the court. Uh, the year before I became judge, there were 1,100 DUIs filed in the Medina Municipal Court, and over 40% of them got reduced to a wow. lesser offense. And I didn't think that was an appropriate way to handle those cases. That was one of my main motivating factors. The other thing that I found as I've been in the job, but it was part of the inspiration for running, is in, when you're in a misdemeanor trial court, like a municipal court, so yeah. I'm not dealing with felons and more of the serious offenses, I get a real chance to help people change their lives for the better. Okay, and now if I'm sending them to jail, I know they're not saying, oh, thank you, judge, for no. helping me change my life for the better, but I get that opportunity every day, and you don't get that in a lot of jobs. Oh. That helps. You know, as I, I've asked this question to several of your colleagues, and uh, it's, it's got, frankly, it's got to be one of my favorite questions now because I, I, I really never know how you, you will all answer me. And you all have uh, pretty unique reasons for okay. doing what you do. And I guess uh, having come from a family of, of judges and lawyers and whatnot, uh, we, we dedicate this show, as you know, to my Uncle Tony, Anthony J. Celebrezzi, who was a federal judge. I've always had great respect for what you have to do every day and, and how difficult it is. So speaking on behalf of myself and, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers, I certainly thank you for doing what you're well, doing. And uh, it's a tough job. <laughs> I think it must be your cousin, Anthony Celebrezzi Jr., yeah, who was yeah, Attorney General. He's deceased now, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. He swore me in. Oh, okay. When I first got elected, he was Attorney General of Ohio and he oh. was a supporter of mine, came up and swore me in for my first term. Well, how about that? Yeah. That's, that was my cousin Tony. Yeah, yeah. He uh, passed away several years right. ago, and uh, he was the Ohio Attorney General. 
Uh, and he was also Secretary of State of Ohio, right. and uh, yeah. he served as a uh, stint in the, the Senate. And of course, his uh, his father and my father were brothers. Right. You know, we affectionately call Uncle Tony, and so yeah. he made for, <laughs> former mayor of Cleveland. Uh, actually, I ran into a lawyer today in the law office, and I was talking about the Kent State decision, and I said, well, you know who ruled on that? And he even called him Uncle Tony. Uncle so we, Tony. we all affectionately <laughs> say. Um, <laughs> Well, Judge, okay, we're going to dig in. Uh, uh, your court is called the Medina, <coughs> Medina Municipal Court, but actually it has jurisdiction outside of Medina. What other areas of the, uh, does the court hold jurisdiction? You know, municipal courts are unique. Each municipal court generally is named after the city where it's physically located. Okay. okay. Wad Medina Municipal Court, Wadsworth Municipal Court. Um, there's some exceptions, but generally that's how it happens. But most of the municipal courts have jurisdiction outside of that municipality. Uh, the Medina Municipal Court has jurisdiction over about 122,000 people living wow. in Medina County. It's essentially the northern two-thirds of Medina County. Okay. It includes the city of Medina, uh, city of Brunswick, uh, Chippewa Lake Village, Spencer Village, and about 11 townships in the northern two-thirds of Medina County. I see. So Medina County is split into two municipal court districts. You're either in the Wadsworth district or the Medina right. district. North or south. And the Medina district is about 122,000, and I think the Wadsworth jurisdiction is about 40, 42,000. 40, Does 40, the county line judge divide? I mean, when folks are traveling Interstate 71 going north, right. they'll, they'll cross over into the Strongsville area there. Right. Do you stop there? We stop right at Boston Road going north on 71, the border between Medina County and Cuyahoga County. My court doesn't have jurisdiction once you get over the Cuyahoga County border. I see, I see. And then uh, and going the other way, somewhere about mid-county? Uh, Montville Town, are you coming down 71? Yeah. On Mont in Montville Township, the border in Montville Township between Montville and must be Guilford Township. Yes. Would be where my court stops and Wadsworth starts. Okay. All right. So, not exactly a misnomer, but could be a little confusing. It I mean, could uh, be, yes. But it does make sense. We'll name the court uh, where it, 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 it does business, and you, right. you do that right in, in Medina, Ohio. Uh, your court, as I indicated earlier, Judge, always ab appears to me to be a very busy place. I, I visit there periodically. Uh, about how many cases does the court handle a year? It goes up and down. Okay. One of the things that often is not well understood is that we have to take everything that comes in. It's not like we go out and look for the cases. They get filed sure. and we take them. So we have a mix of civil and criminal cases. Uh, last year, 2008, we had about just over 18,000 cases go through the Medina Municipal 18, Court. 18,000? 18,000. The average municipal judge in Ohio in a job like mine hears a little over 13,000. It's a very busy place. And within that group of 18,000 cases, um, and it's gone up over time, uh, we keep a running average. We look at how things go over a five-year period. Okay? Sure. And over the last five years, we've averaged about 17,300 cases every year. It's a what very busy place. What happens, Judge? I mean, uh, I, I actually, um, we, we may even have a mutual acquaintance. I've mentioned him on the show a couple of times. Judge Routson of Hancock. Yeah, Reggie Routson. Reg, yeah. and, and Reg is a, uh, a, 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 a common pleas court. Yes, now, now, but yes. he had a, was on well, a I'm sure bench for years. You, yeah. you gentlemen were colleagues. And I could remember, uh, <coughs> Rich had a, uh, a load just about what you described. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, another judge came to that court. It must have been an act of the legislature. Yeah. Is, is there a magic number that causes that to happen? Or I wish there were. Okay. It's a complicated process to create a new judgeship. Um, the Supreme Court, in a, re in a report a few years ago, recommended that once you get over 10,500 cases, you should start to look at the need for a second judge. Yeah, well, well, we've been there for 20 years. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, also, the DUI caseload's pretty stiff. We'll see an, an average of 800 DUIs a year in this oh. court. Um, most municipal judges see a little over 300.